Oh my goodness. Look at that. I don't even recognize this thing. Yeah, is this the same plane? Oh my goodness. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to Reed Hillview Airport here in San Jose, California. And welcome to a video we have been looking forward to making for about what, five or six months now? It is pickup day of our Bonanza F33A with its new Avidyne Dynon glass panel set up and we are beyond excited to see this panel for the first time. We have not seen any pictures, no sneak peeks. Your guys' first time seeing it will be our first time seeing it. So this is gonna be awesome. We're about to hit the skies in the A36TC here, 772 Mike. We got Owen at the controls again. Owen, good morning, 7 a.m. It's gonna be a fun day. Guys, this has been six months in the making. I hope you guys are excited as we are for this. Are you ready for this? We're gonna go Big from case. a panel looking like that to oh all God. glass, Night baby. Day, baby. Oh, I cannot wait. And of course, this video, you're gonna wanna stay tuned to the whole thing, grab some popcorn, it's gonna be a good one. We're gonna meet up with Callum at Advanced Aviation in Reno. He's gonna show us everything uh, with the new panel, how it works, and then we'll be hitting the skies for a two hour test flight. Sasha, unfortunately, cannot come. Uh, she's got work here at Stanford, but she will take the video of us taking off. All right. The only downside of this Bonanza swap is that we're giving up two seats. Remember guys, the F33A has four seats. A36, obviously the club seating, barn door, six seater. It should be a pretty quick flight over to Reno, maybe about 45, 50 minutes over the beautiful Sierra Nevadas in Lake Tahoe. So without further ado, let's roll the cinematic edit as we zoom over to Nevada and we get reunited with our beautiful F33A. Let's go. Bam. Oh, and look who it is. There's Callum. Heck Hello. yeah, right on time. Meeting up with us on a Saturday morning at 8 a.m. What a guy. We are minutes away from seeing the panel for oh. the first time. Owen, Christian. If I didn't mention Jay's with us this trip as well. Jay, you looking forward to this? Oh, Even I though can't. you don't know how it started. <laughs> I cannot wait to see it. It started something like this in front of you. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a very exciting day for everybody. Bam. Callum, good morning. Thank morning. you for meeting up with us. So, uh, you have something we want behind this door. I don't think so. I don't think you want to. I think you've decided that you just want to leave it here. <laughs> right. You want to keep it? Yeah, leave it as your show display model. I, I, I just think I'm having too much fun flying it around. The moment we've all been waiting for. Oh, the anticipation. Why has it got to open so slow? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Our first ever avionics upgrade. And what a way to do a first time avionics upgrade with a full glass setup. Here we go, introducing the new and improved Bonanza F33. Wow! Dang, I forgot how good that paint looks. Don't look at the panel yet. I know, right? It's been so long since we've seen it, I forgot how shiny and perfect it looks. All washed up under these lights, looking great. Okay! Oh, look okay. at how the door steward just... Oh, the door steward! Wow, oh my goodness, look at that.
Who wants to be first up there? Owen, oh, get in. You're gonna be doing the one flying it. Don't mind if I do. Oh my goodness. Look at that. It's gorgeous. I don't even recognize this thing. Yeah, is this the same plane? Oh my goodness. Christian, get a good look at that. <laughs> it's like Christmas all over. Beautiful. Oh my goodness. What do you think? <laughs> oh, I love it. It looks like it just came off the showroom floor. It's as if Beechcraft was still making an F-33 today. This is how it would look with new paint, new interior, and new avionics. That's kind of what I was thinking on the way over. What else is there to do? We did all the big items. Paint, interior, avionics. Maybe when the engine times out, we can go with some like turbo normalized, Tornado Alley turbo modded 550 or something. Maybe, but like no point to rip out the perfectly good engine that's in it now that will fly for hundreds of more hours. For now, this is all we can do. Like, what else can you do? Maybe tint the windows, but that's a small modification. That's nothing crazy. Frank, you said, wait till you see it all lit up. Have you seen it? You got a little sneak peek? Flying in it two weeks ago. What? You flew in it? That's yeah. awesome. And everything worked, all the buttons. Like a kitten. I assume you went through a lot of functions. Was there a favorite thing that stuck out to you? Uh, I was sitting in the back seat because we were doing test flight, okay, but it right. was absolutely stunning to watch everything work just like planned. To think in just one hour, we'll be in the air flying it because Owen there's there's probably quite a few functions that uh, you have not used before so yeah, it's definitely gonna be a bit of a learning curve yep and Callum will be a great teacher since he installs these all day every day okay Callum you worked magic on this one yeah. go ahead and explain everything that you did to our viewers I'm sure they are okay. curious yeah the team did a phenomenal job with this one basically gone through this with a uber fine-tooth comb mm -hmm. um, in terms of like wiring, I think the only things that are remaining is the original uh, landing gear wiring and the flap wiring. I think apart from that, mostly every other wire has been replaced. What? So oh my goodness. You guys are a couple of interior plastics away from this being like an absolute killer show plane. Starting on the outside, I know most of your work was on the inside, but you did do a few things, starting with one that they can't even see under the cowling. Under the cowling, we've got all new engine probes, sensors, uh, got new fuel flow, fuel pressure. All the vacuum system is all gone, and holy crap, there was quite a lot of vacuum system stuff. <laughs> like pipes and tubes. Look at all this room. Filters. This yeah. is so simple. It's naturally aspirated 520. So under here and under here, we've got the new uh, Zeiss fuel centers. One of my favorite modifications. To other people, it might not be that big of a deal, but like the reassurance of knowing exactly how much fuel you have in the plane to a tenth of a gallon, right? Well, and you can actually trust it. You won't have to worry about, oh, are my gauges actually going to be accurate? Do I actually have that much fuel in there? Right. Let me land early. And so people understand, like, you don't have to add fuel quantity when you fill it up like we had to do on all of our other planes. That's going to make life easy. So we've got the uh, new Whelan LED Ooh, lights in the tips. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hit them, Owen. So all the lights now are all LED. All the lights you are running complete all LED. Full LED Whelan light setup. All the links to all of these companies will be down below. And of course, Advanced Aviation will put your phone number and link down below. Wow, that is bright. Jeez, so much better. Look at this. Oh my. We are going to light the night. So we're going for the nice low profile Whelan LED one there. Much shorter and white gray to go with the paint job. No more yeah. red. That is awesome. Thank you. Are both these new or just one? Uh, they're both new. Um, so this one is feeding one of the Avidines. This one is feeding the Dynon system. Uh, there's another GPS antenna up the front that was existing. So you've got independent GPS antennas for each of your GPS systems. Boom. So you've got one for one of the RF dynes, you've got another one for the other, and the dyno runs off another WAS GPS antenna. OAT probe underneath there, outside air temperature. Time for the inside. Okay, let me hop in the back so that when he's explaining it, I can have a good shot. Oh wow, I forgot how comfortable these seats are. Ron Matta, Aviation Creations, outdid himself once again on this new interior, new armrests, new carpets, you know, nice black carpets. I'm sure you guys remember that from a few videos ago. Here we go. Baby. Oh my lordy. Waking up the beast. Well, where do I start? They came out so nice and clean. The carbon fiber is amazing. I was yeah, wondering nice if you would do it. it. And it's not like the shiny one that's gonna reflect into your eyes. It's like a no, nice, it's like, a nice matte finish. Yeah. Was very matte on carbon like fiber. That. Yeah, and then, me and Matt, so we've got all the placarding labels in there, so these are all hand painted on. Wow. Really? We've got a really talented local guy that does all the silk screening for us. Look at the clarity on these screens. It's oh. just incredible. Wow, the yeah. EI panels came out really yeah. nice. Uh -huh. yeah, so I don't know if you can make this out on camera, but they are all uh, backlit LEDs now. 
Oh. Uh, it was a uh, Nimbus Aviation over in Florida that ended up doing the job, and wow. they did an absolutely wow. fantastic job. If you just leave the old ones, sure, that's okay, but it just looks so dated, whereas this, this looks like yeah. a brand it, new. It, it's factory new looking. Yeah. So we've got it on the circuit breaker panel. We've got it on the middle panel here with your vent blower and flaps. We've also got it on the left sub panel with all your switches. Wow. Oh. I love that. So subtle, yet a really nice touch to modernize that area as well. Oh, All right. new Rosen visors yes. before we Shout get to the screens. Rosen, thanks for sending these. Owen's a big fan, keeping that sun out of his love face. my Rosens. Awesome. my skin looking young. <laughs> and they also just look great up there. We've got the whole Avidine stack in here. So we've got the AMX 240 audio panel. We've got the Big Daddy, the IFD 550, Lost GPS Navcom with built-in synthetic vision. And we've got the IFD 440 to accompany Man. it. Behind the scenes, we've also got the uh, Avidine remote transponder. And we've also got the Skytrax 200 dual ADS-B receiver hooked into these. So traffic and weather will show up on both the displays. There's so much. I, I could go on for days <laughs> and days. Yeah, keeping it simple. So what Avidine excels in is being a absolutely phenomenal FMS system. It's even more than just a... A GPS navigator. It's basically as a an FMS, like a world class system. Wow. Which is more akin to the other kind of stuff that Owen normally flies, big jets and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You have separate FMS. So we've got our flight management system in here, which we'll go into more detail when we take it flying. We've got a nice little map. We can toggle different things on and off, so we can kind of declutter the screen and everything like that. All our traffic and weather will show up around it. Uh, we also have charts. Wow. Available on nice. here when we're outside and we've got GPS position, our uh, little plane will show up here and will all be geo referenced. And the big thing about the 550 is that we have the 3D AR mm. skin belt in here, so wow. you've got another form of uh, redundancy for your attitude. That makes Avidine unique because synthetic it does. vision yeah. being built in. And there's so much more that Avidine provides um, as standard out of the box, you know, with no added cost, like as Wi Fi and Bluetooth built in as standard. So other companies are like 1500 bucks. You've got to buy a little SD card, but it's all included all right. in here in the price. There's no other company that has the 3D synthetic vision built in that's not available from anybody awesome. else. And Avidine is also the only one that does like a trailing view, uh, synthetic vision view as well, which we'll see when we're out flying. You get more and you pay less. Avidine's where it's at. <laughs> I'm all about that. You know, even if they cost the same, I'm just at a point where I much, much prefer using this. Along with being more intuitive and everything like that, it's there's so much less button pushing. There, there's no stacking in here. If I wanted to do, you know, just a quick direct two, is in there. Um, Whoa. Or nine, <laughs> that's, at the bottom. That's the beauty of having both the 550 and the 440. One becomes a keyboard. Yep. That is very cool. It's touch screen, but you also have a lot of buttons. Yep, so I can do everything with the knobs and buttons that I can do on the touch screen. So everybody's happy because some people prefer knobs, some people prefer touch screen. It yep. gives you both. When we're up in the air, I'll uh, give you the little Bluetooth keyboard nice. that comes in. What? And you'll be able to do everything off of the little Bluetooth keyboard. What? Wow. Or That's even awesome. your co-pilot can do it. Somebody sitting in the back with their iPad, you can just uh, new flight plan from ForeFlight or something like that, and it will pop up. Wow. Awesome. But there's just so many different ways that you can do stuff and they're all easy. So to access the uh, the new ADS-B transponder, so we just do two button pushes on that. So oh. the transponder is now remote. So you can tap up here and then you can tap in your, uh, your transponder squawk code. Or if you're already squawking a code and you just want to go to VFR, you can just press the VFR button there. I like that. And it's auto switching between ground and air. It's got a pseudo GPS squat switch in it. Or you can do it off the little Bluetooth keyboard. Yeah, redundancy. I see a new audio panel. Yeah, audio panel. For me, one of the best features of the new breed of audio panels is auto squelch. There's no more fiddling around with different squelch levels. You know, you've got to change it depending on how quietly you talk or whatever. This is just all automatic. Oh, nice. So there's no more with that. You just set your volume and just leave it at that. If somebody falls asleep in the back and starts snoring, it'll just cancel them out. You've also got different wow. isolation modes. So if the pilot is going into like class B airspace or something and they just need absolute concentration, uh, the pilot can just isolate himself. The other passengers can continue having their own conversation, but the pilot can just be completely dialed into doing radios and concentrate. Perfect. And you said there's a playback if you miss a... Yep, up there in the top left, you got the replay oh, whoa. button. Oh, that'll come in handy. I'll just keep pressing that yep. when I'm doing the <laughs> It's also got inbuilt uh, Bluetooth, 
So you can have your phone connected up to the audio panel. Uh, you can take phone calls and stuff like that, or you can just stream music up to it. Wow. So wow. can I transfer flight plans from Four Flight directly into this? Yes. Even if I like, let's say I have a flight plan with fixes and I move a little waypoint to create like a waypoint with coordinates, it'll yep. recognize the coordinates. Yeah, waypoint, yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I find myself a lot of the time for terrain or for weather having to alter my flight plan and it there's sometimes where I want to go is not directly over a fix so I just use a custom waypoint and yeah. being able to have that and have it fly to it specifically what? is huge. Another cool thing about the Avidine, um you've also got all terrain awareness and everything like that in it. So if you're coming up too close on mountains and anything like that, um all the terrain will be highlighted in different colors on the screen. Mm. You'll also get audio warnings as well, who I call Betty. <laughs> so uh, yeah, you'll have your own Betty on board. It can do stuff like airspace alerts as well. So if you're, you know, going in between Class Bravos and things mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. you can set it up to where it'll give you a call out, you know, like approaching the airspace in 10 miles or something. Oh, that's super cool. I like that. Uh, everything in green here is being pumped in from a different system. So we have barrow adjusted altitude being pumped over from the Dynon system into here. Yeah, so look at all that configuration. Yeah, so it, th this is oh. slightly more advanced like calculators and stuff. There's so much that the Avidine system can do. Off to the right, just so we finish the right side of the panel, we got the yep. new ELT. Yep, new ELT from Artex, the 345. So that's the new 406 megahertz um, ELT signal. And it also has GPS position from the Avidine getting spat out into the uh, ELT. Okay, and then two chargers off to the right. You oh, loaded yeah. us up with chargers. Yeah, so we've got some uh, mint continent chargers here. So we've got both USB A and the new USB C. And also, yeah, so we've got the new door steward installed here. So it, it, it's made a big difference. The thing that I love about the Dynon screens is that just how configurable they are. After a few hours of flying, you'll probably find what you're going to prefer. Sure. Um, at the moment, we've got it split. So we've got a full PFD on the left hand side mm -hmm. and we've got a split screen map and EMS on the right hand side. Into the EMS, the number one feature that I love doing on the, especially Bonanza type aircraft, the three gears that is cool. down and locked oh, and we've yeah. also got the transit light there as well. I, I like that because from here, from my pilot's position perspective, the lights are blocked. You really kind of have to lean over and look so to have that backup, it's kind of nice. I like that. We also have audio alerts set up. So it knows if you get below a certain airspeed, we've got it set up for, I think it's 80 knots in this. Wow. Uh, but if you go below 80 knots without having your gear down, yeah. you will get a check gear. I'm sure the insurance company loves people having that. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. definitely. Uh, we also have the flap system integrated into here. All the degree markings we've got integrated into the screen. Again, the dyno system knows that it's a flap system. And we also have all the airspeed limitations from the POH put into the Dynon system. So it'll know wow. based on your airspeed if you're at danger of overspeeding your flaps. So these are our new uh, Zeiss fuel senders. We've got left and right. You can make this whole thing an engine monitor? I can. We can do display, setup. So what do we want our primary content to be? Engine. engine let's try that. And we'll go back and we'll do full screen. Whoa. So we can nice. have a full screen engine monitor as well. Heck yeah. Okay, now let's say I want half engine monitor, half uh, map. Display. Let's go. Split content, map. Whoa, that is awesome. Any configuration you want. And vice versa, you can put it on the left and then that on the right. If yep, you absolutely. Want to. Or okay. if you wanted, we can also do this. Yep. I can do setup, primary content, map, engine bottom band. Hmm. Ooh, I kind of like so that. Have a full page map with just the essentials. Ah, I like oh, that. Oh, this is awesome. Uh, EGT, CHT. Yeah, all your cylinders. You still got the gear. I like that a That's lot. That's my favorite. Dynon and Avidine combo is just untouchable for the money, especially. 100%. Oh, I've integrated all your uh, checklists into the Dynon displays. Really? So if we go menu and checklists, everything programmed in there. So we've got initial, everything from walk arounds, mm -hmm. and we've got Whoa. before engine start. Maintenance log. Yeah, you can add some stuff in here. So uh, you can program in uh, what tack time your oil change is due, what date your annual's due, that oh. kind of stuff. Hmm. And yeah. it'll give you a little pop-up alerts. I will do that. It'll be handy to know, just oil. You don't have to refer to your binder full of logs. You just yep. pop it up, know when your oil change is coming up. Yep. 
You can also load in uh, weight and balance and stuff like that into here uh, once you've got the different numbers plumbed into it. Timer for switching fuel tanks? Uh, the, the timer can, it, it's, it's got a few different things. It's a, a run up, run down, timer kind of thing. So you can set it for five minutes and run down, especially if you've got something like a turbo bonanza, you've mm. got to cool the turbo down. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so you can just run the chronograph for that. Normally we would have just the uh, Dynon oh. topographical map. So this is free. Uh, that comes from Dynon. You get free updates on a monthly basis. Hmm. Uh, but we have the Seattle Avionics uh, subscription at the moment. So we have access to full sectional charts. Mm. They're just loaded straight off the USB. And we've also got low IFR charts. Oh, wow. So you can toggle between the two depending on what you want. Oh, you mm. can do it. That's awesome. I mean, there you go. What about zooming out, pinch it? Yep. Oh, no way. No way. Wow. This will be nice because sometimes ATC will say clear direct Cigna and then join the airway and then you have to look for Cigna on the chart. This will be great. You know, you can zoom yep. right in. That is cool. Oh, there's a big red dot there. Oh, let's see what that is. Oh, well, how about that? The TFR. And of course, you know, you can have half page over there mm -hmm. on the pilot screen mm -hmm. or you can have full page here. It's just, you know, just whatever you end up feeling more comfortable with depending on your workflow. Yeah. We've also got weather options in here. So the Dyno system also has a dual ADS-B receiver in it as well. So you're gonna get all of your ADS-B traffic popping up around and you've got ADS-B weather that you can animate. So if there's a cloud system coming through with rain, it'll show you a little animation. This unit uh, connected into here for all its calm and nav frequencies as well. So if you see up at the top of the screen, so we've mm. got 124.9 as well as doing it on the Avidine. I can also tap here, um, hmm. put in our frequency, and uh, if I just do it, one, two, three, four, five. So we have sectionals on here. Do we also have approach plates as well? Yeah, absolutely. Here at Reno, so if I press the uh, info button, this is our little info panel here. So we've got different airport information here. Like that. Along with uh, all the list of the comfrey frequencies that we're gonna need. Uh, we've also got uh, weather for Ooh. the ADS-B weather coming in, even if you can't pick up the ATIS or something like that. Runway information and remarks coming in, okay. which is really pretty cool. But yeah, so your approach plates. Yes. Under the PLT for pilot tab. Aha. Uh -huh. There we go. So we've got everything from airport diagrams, geo reference. It's a little confused because yeah. <laughs> we're in the <laughs> hangar. Yeah. But as you can see here, yeah, we're uh, geo referenced wow. in here. GPS X-ray Zulu for one seven left. And there you go. You can also make this kind of full half screen. Again, it's all pinched to zoom and everything like that. You I can go down, that. view the whole plate. I like how easy the zooming and the scrolling is. Like, it's not like some of the other touch screens where it's not as responsive. This is really nice. Just like an iPad. Yeah. It's a little bit easier on the test flight because, you know, seeing everything in action. We haven't even got to the PFD yet. We have one more screen. <laughs> Over here on the left, um, you'll be able to see it better when we're outside and we have GPS because normally you've got all the synthetic vision and everything mm -hmm. like that going on. It'll show you mountains, runways, obstacles and everything on the screen, um, even planes and different traffic and stuff like that. You'll have a little uh, markers going across. This is also all configurable so you can have that split screen mm. as well. You can even have that little engine bar down the bottom of the PFD. Nice. Anything that you can do on this screen, you can do on this screen, and anything you can do on this screen, you can do on this screen. But I can even bring up a, another PFD on oh this side God. as well. And down oh. below. <laughs> Get in the candy store. <laughs> it's too much fun. Yeah, and you'll notice how quick it is. Yeah, it's, there's no yeah. lag, it's just boom. One of the highest resolution displays on the market. Bang for the buck, I keep thinking like better than the others and it's way cheaper than the others. Yeah. Because you said they really got their start in experimental planes. Yep. So they need an STC to go into these planes? Yes, so um, all the screens and everything are, um, even though they're the same model and everything as the experimental ones, they are different part numbers. So the certified ones have different part numbers and they all have a PMA sticker, which is required for a certificated right. aircraft. But yeah, the only difference pricing wise is that you buy the STC to enable you to uh, legally install it. Right. And then all the pricing for all the rest of the equipment is all experimental pricing. They pretty much have the STC for all the big planes. So if some guy viewing this video has a Mooney or a 172 yeah. or just... There's a list of over 600 aircraft oh, that okay. are able to install this system. Wow. They're going through um, the list and doing autopilot STCs. Uh, so you can install in a Cessna 172, uh, Bonanza A36s. 
um, and also most recently the uh, Cessna 182 series but I can confirm that the uh, 33 models are on the list of things to do yeah. so uh, hopefully before too long within a couple of years you'll be able to have the dyno and autopilot system in this Heck yeah, okay, yep. So that brings up the next thing of our old autopilot is still in there, but like we said last video, that's because what he just said, they haven't fully released the Dynon autopilot yet, but that'll be coming soon, and what, Callum, you'll just yank that out and plop the new one in? Yeah, so we have pre-wired for the Dynon autopilot already. All the cables are all run for the positions that the servos are most likely gonna go in. Mm -hmm. um, the STEC 30 is just hooked up to uh, both the Avidyne units at the moment. Same functionality as before, GPSS steering, uh, localizer approach, things like that. But when the Dynon autopilot goes in, it's going to be a game changer. I don't know for sure, but it'll most likely be a three-axis autopilot, so it'll have a yaw damper as well. You'll have GPS following and full VOR ILS following as well. So this little blanking plate is where the future autopilot panel will go. Cover the old one up, yank that out and then plop the new one in there when it gets approved. Yep, absolutely. And Easy. then here we can either do a blanking plate or you can have extra USBs, chronograph clock, or mm, whatever you want. See, he's already planning ahead. Cool, well we'll be back right when they approve it. We'll be first in line to get it. Absolutely. And hopefully it won't be too much longer since they've already approved the other Bonanzas. This one's next on the list. Down here below the pilot's PFD, we also have the backup D10. So this is your uh, completely independent backup source of attitude, airspeed, altitude, and magnetic heading as well. Boom. All right, that covers most. Actually, no, that probably covers a small little smidge of what the this- essentials. Yeah, this is the basic essentials of what this setup is capable of. We're about to take it up in the air to show you, hopefully, maybe more like 90% of what it can do in action. Hangar doors opening up. Oh my goodness. Guys, I, I can't wipe this smile off my face. We've been looking forward to this day for so long, like we said, but like to think it's actually happening and like it's right there I feel like I'm dreaming look at it it's beautiful it's so pretty look at that view wow what a gorgeous airport wow. kind of like Bozeman you're at home airport in a way how it's got the runway and then the mountains right behind it yeah exactly probably more snow in here than Bozeman right now right the new avionics Jeffrey what do you think oh my gosh my thoughts I'm 11 out of 10 like yeah. how can you beat that the beautiful thing about it is you have obviously the aesthetic but the practicality right I mean right. all of it does something it all has a purpose all, all right. has a use and safety redundancy crew resource management all right talk about being a better pilot and a exactly. safer pilot if you're on the fence about upgrading your avionics and you're thinking, ah, oh, well, it's a lot of money, I get it. It is a big chunk of change, but it adds value to the plane. You get most of it back. Sometimes you get more than it back. And you know what? Life is too short to be flying a six pack all day. Like the, the fun and the capabilities, the safety of having a glass setup like this, I'd say go for it guys, or at least just test the waters, you know, give Cal a call, see what it would be, how much it would run for, you know, either a full blown setup like this, or maybe just one display or just the Avidyne units or something like that. There's, there's levels to it. Of course, we went all out because, you know, YouTube, why not? But we thoroughly enjoy the opportunity of being able to share a setup like this with you guys. And you certainly seem to be loving the content, blowing up all these videos. So we really appreciate that as well. All the love in the comment sections and you guys smashing that like button, subscribing to the channel. It means a lot. The, the more you guys subscribe and like the videos, the more we'll go out and keep buying planes and upgrading them and, you know, giving them a new lease on life. This plane started out an old, dated, high time, yellow, ugly interior kind of rough around the edges plane to now like Callum said nearly a show plane this was a first class experience here at advanced aviation reno Callum and the team crushed it like they always do and like they promised they would they delivered we got options owen which one which one are you doing the yeah owen DC or the F decisions decisions <laughs> this is some first world problems hmm which airplane which bonanza should, should i today? take today <laughs> i don't think you'll want to be flying this one much anymore when you got this one yeah this one definitely has a special place in my heart this is going to be a forever airplane for sure yeah we're... whenever you decide to sell it i'm buying you out <laughs> right look at it out in the sun the paint and the metallic black paint you guys can finally see the sparkle in here as well it's a little hard to pick up on sometimes look at that metallic finish in the black which is unique normally it's a flat black but we went with the metallic black metallic blue and then on top of the gloss apollo gray base coat it's not white even though it looks kind of white it's just slightly gray which i think is really fun unique and different and of course the big b on the back this thing is glowing it is ready 
for its first maiden flight. Christian, I think uh, I think we kind of have to end the video here. It's already getting a little long. Might have to leave the best part for part two. Leave them oh, on a huge man. cliffhanger. Oh, and this is a crime leaving the viewers on this much of a cliffhanger. Sorry guys, you're gonna have to wait till the next one. Stay tuned. All right, subscribe to the channel. I won't make you guys wait a week. I'll post in like three days. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the first flight in the F-33. We got Callum here, we're about to go up. All right, you ready Callum? Oh, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. This was long in the making. We uh, have been looking forward to this day for a long time and I know you guys have as well. So thank you for the patience. And we had to be patient also waiting a month for this nasty weather to clear up. All right, Owen, final thoughts, words of wisdom on the panel? Came out perfect. As Callum said, it's probably the best project they've ever done and I think it lives up to that. Heck yeah, oh. that's what I'm talking about. All right, everything will be linked down below. All the companies we worked with to build this plane like we did and of course Callum and Advanced Aviation Reno. Call Call them up, get a quote, get your plane upgraded. Like I said, life's too short not to have a glass panel. All right guys, see you in the next one.